This is a Sotec 1080 Ti graphics card that I bought for a very good price. The previous owner explained that the card does not output anything on the screen, but the fans are spinning. He inspected the PCB, looking for obvious issues like damage or burn components, but couldn't find any. So let's take it apart and do some visual inspections first. I did some quick poking around with the multimeter, checking for shorts and measuring values, but everything seems to be fine. I also removed the backplate to inspect the other side of the board, and it's all looking good so far. So now I have assembled the card again and placed the card in my test rig. The card indeed does not show any output, but the motherboard I'm using has integrated Intel graphics, so I'm able to run visual diagnostic tests from the built-in display card. I'm running mats with the switch dash N and the index value 1 to make mats run the tests on the external graphics card. The report is now generated and I can see that there are writing errors on the memory chip FBIOD0. The key number here is the D0 value. These VRAM chips are arranged in channels consisting of two memory chips per channel. Memory modules are counted counterclockwise, starting from the opposite corner of the golden arrow on the core. Starting from A1, A0, B1, B0, C1, C0, D1, and here we have D0. I will put an X on the chip and proceed with the chip removal. I'm using a bottom heater to heat up the PCB as this is a multi-layered PCB, which is very good at driving the heat away. I'm also keeping a low airspeed to prevent components from flying off the board. I accidentally lost the chip while lifting it with my tweezers, but luckily it didn't bump into other components. Now I'm applying fresh leaded solder to the pads to lower the melting temperature and then remove all the solder using the soldering braid. It's important to use as little pressure as possible to prevent damage to the pads and the PCB coating.
Now I will apply fresh leaded solder to the VRAM chip and remove the unleaded solder here as well. I'm going over multiple times with flux and desoldering braid to make sure that all the solder is removed from the pads. I'm doing a quick visual inspection of the pads on the VRM, looking for missing or damaged pads and traces. I'm not sure if the VRAM chip is dead or not, so I take measurements between the data lines and ground in diet mode using my multimeter. You can easily find the data sheets for your memory chips on the internet. The datasheet tells me that the ground pads are green and the data pads are the blue ones. I'm getting consistent values, meaning that the chip is most likely undamaged. I'm doing the same measurements on the PCB board pads as well. And it's all looking good on both the board and the VRAM chip. I was going to place an order for a new VRAM chip, but since the measured values are good, I will try to reboil the chip and test first. I have a bunch of reboil BGA stencils, but did not have one for the 0.4mm pitch so I will have to place the solder balls manually. The way I do it is that I smear a thin coat of flux onto the chip and then pour some solder balls and then move them into place using tweezers. And let me tell you, this is a tedious process, so I will speed it up. So the solder balls are in place, so now I will use hot air to melt the solder at around 5% air speed. Temperature is set to around 400 degrees C. And a last inspection. Next up is reflowing the chip onto the board. I've put on a thin coat of flux onto the board and aligned the chip. I'm using a higher airspeed to heat up both the chip and the board. I'm bumping the chip to check if the solder is making a good connection. I know that the chip is soldered properly if the chip moves and then moves back to its position. The chip is now soldered, and I can clean the board and assemble the card.
The card is now placed back into my test rig. I am getting video output from the card now, so I don't need to use the motherboard's internal graphics card. And it's a success. The report shows no errors and the card is now working again. I've installed the latest NVIDIA driver and Furmar is running a stress test, which I will leave running for a while. And we are done! I hope you found this video interesting, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions and please like and subscribe to my channel if you like watching stuff like this.